One of the elements I'm going to take is slightly different to others. I worked for a funeral director for, four, for three years. When you work in death, you become used to it. You understand and you walk beside those who experience death. And what I saw each time were those who had been recipients of palliative care processes and those who hadn't. Those who had acknowledged the individual that they loved in the time that they were alive. They shared their thoughts and their feelings and listened to what the individual wanted and made sure that they put that into place after their death. But you also saw at the funeral the celebration of the individual by the family because they had gone through a process of accepting a tough decision, accepting that grief was coming, ultimately that death would take their loved one, but they acknowledged that that person had made an incredible contribution to the life, not only of their family, but to their friends and others around them. Then I saw those who had not gone through a process of having the levels of support and understanding that death is always there at any time of our lives. It depends on the circumstances. And when you work in a funeral parlour, you see death come to individuals at any age for a whole host of reasons. And you see families that don't cope with death because it's been most challenging. And the ones that I found, the interesting ones, were those who were in their older years. Women, when their husbands passed away, seemed to cope with life extremely well. They had support mechanisms around them that had good interactions and their health took them many years past that of their husband or their partner in life. With men, often I would see, we would do a funeral and then within 10 months, we'd be burying the husband. Because, and each of the ones when the family talked to you, because we were seen as neutral. Uh, because I worked in the funeral parlour, I learnt to do a lot of counselling and listening. Listening first and then just offering gentle advice and directing people to levels of support that were important. And in that process, you'd hear people say, I wished I'd told the other person that I'd loved them. I wished I'd told them that they were important to me for the following reasons. And I wished I'd shared my good thoughts about them to override and overcome the times in which I argued with them and often had bitter arguments where I said some very hurtful things. But those who had palliative care, and I go back to Violet, and I thank you for your welcome to country too, Violet. In the Aboriginal community, when you go to our funerals, while the priest is doing the homily and committing a body back to Mother Earth, you'll hear people telling jokes about the person we're burying but they're not derogatory. They're very affectionate about the funny moments in life that we recall. And that, in a sense, for Aboriginal people, is a palliative care process that not only does your family give you, but a community and those around you give you as well. And so in some communities where there are frequent deaths, and I can go to communities in uh, different parts of Australia where there's at least two deaths a week, the community haven't become immune to death. The grief is still there but they're mechanisms of supporting each other through both humour, through talking, and through celebrating a life makes it much easier. In palliative care, when you think about the dimensions of diversity, and I certainly saw that in my funeral parlour days, different cultural groups had different practices. They had different approaches. Grief doesn't change for any of us, but we can soften the journey of grief through the support that we offer. Even strangers, and I was a stranger to just about every one of the families that I ever sat and talked with, it helped them. I think Australians generally are too scared to talk of death. We're not comfortable talking about death. It's not a conversation you often hear around a kitchen table unless it's a suicide. Or if somebody like your situation, Nola, where we know somebody in the family is dying from the illness, it's not curable. We accept it, but we also spend time with them. 
and we take the opportunity to connect and engage in a very considered and compassionate way. And I congratulate um, you on the work that you do, Jay. I also want to thank both co-chairs because what you're doing is you're highlighting the need for us to have these conversations. To Pat Sparrow, the work you do in aged care, in dealing with death, which is common to all of us working in the aged care sector, is important. And so I commend you for the day, and it's great. And let's keep talking about the love and the support and the way in which we can help others, even those we dislike in life, and there are people we dislike, we should still reach out and give them that journey of a quality ending that indicates that they were precious. Thank you.